Hello, I'm Bob the Booker and welcome back to my channel. Uh, today, as you can see, I'm sort of lit up slightly by the sun uh, and so I've got this kind of slightly glowing thing going on, which is actually, like, it kind of looks okay on camera but it's a little bit distracting in my eyes. So let's see how this goes. This is, this is what you do for filming most of your stuff in a room that doesn't really have curtains. So, <laughs> uh, after all of the hype that this book has had, it feels almost sort of redundant to add another voice reviewing it. But I wanted to talk about the newest Sally Rooney book, Beautiful World, Where Are You? Um, so I should say sort of as a disclaimer, well two sort of disclaimers at the beginning. Firstly, I will be eventually talking about spoilers, but the first part of this video will be spoiler free. Um, and then, uh, you know, and sort of only talking about things that are kind of known from the, the back cover of the book. And then I'll go into spoiler territory and I will announce when that's about to happen. Uh, so rest assured if you're still wanting to check the book out. Um, and the other disclaimer I should make is that uh, I'm reading it as somebody who liked normal people but didn't love it and had, you know, was sort of a bit lukewarm about some aspects of it. So I was really kind of keen going into this book to kind of see if it would do anything a bit different. And I have to admit as well, I think part of what spurred me on to check it out was the fact that some people I, I know and whose opinions I really trust and respect seem to enjoy the book quite a lot. Um, one of which being Eric over at The Lonesome Reader, um, who we we were sort of chatting and he'd basically just been to a Sally, Sally Rooney event uh, where she spoke about the book. And actually some of the conversations that, that Eric was saying that Sally had been talking about actually made me think that maybe this book had a little bit more um, to, to offer me than, than perhaps her previous ones. Um, because I think, you know, it's worth sort of, you know, it's worth sometimes knowing your lane and knowing the, the sorts of books you like and don't like. Um, and, you know, there are definitely advanced copies of books that I've looked at before on things like NetGalley and kind of weighed up and just thought, actually, is this the kind of book that if I saw it in a shop, would I pick it up? And if the answer is probably no, then I feel like it's maybe unfair for me to take it as a net galley thing and then potentially have it have a negative review when it's not the kind of book that I might actually in, have enjoyed in the first place, whether it's well well done or not. And that, in some ways I sort of felt a little bit like that with Sally Rooney of, is it fair of me to go and read Beautiful World, Where Are You? If I think it's, you know, she's someone who I might not necessarily enjoy. And I'm pleasant, I'm glad to say that I was pleasantly surprised and actually really did enjoy uh, Beautiful World, Where Are You? Um, so to start off with the plot of this book, this book is largely focused around the relationship between two women, um, Alice and Eileen, and um, a large part of the book is either sort of flitting between their perspectives or watching as they email each other. And this book has sort of been pitched in some ways as a bit of a sort of modern, a sort of take in some ways on modern relationships, but also on how those relationships interact with the world at large. Um, and there are a couple of passages where, you know, they do speak about the, this idea of what it means to be, uh, you know, is it right to kind of be focusing on sex and relationships whilst the world is burning? <laughs> you know, is that is that really what we should be doing? And actually, I think this book is really successful in in looking at those parts. And I think that's also, you know, something that Sally Rooney, um, at least with something like Normal People, was sort of quite known for, a sort of intricate takes on on relationships and how people sort of interact with each other. Um, and I think that's a really key and interesting part of this book. So this book focuses on these two women in Ireland. One of them, uh, Alice, is a successful writer. Um, she is sort of, she's known for quite, quite widely. She's had a, a couple of really successful books. And if this starts sounding familiar, that is possibly it. You know, I think it's an easy thing in a lot of reviews where people have sort of said, well, obviously, you know, this seems to be a bit of a Sally Rooney figure. But actually, what what's quite interesting is both women are kind of Sally Rooney in, in some way. Um, and it really does explore various parts of that. Now, obviously, we're not to take it verbatim that this Alice is exactly Sally Rooney. Obviously, some there'll be some deviations, but it is interesting. We're watching um, a a successful writer who is talking about sort of having this whirlwind unexpected success after quite a few, you know, a couple of early books. Um, her fans are sort of quite uh, vociferous in their love for her and to the extent where she feels almost overwhelmed and um, indeed we find out quite early on that the, the, the author character Alice had had a bit of um, a breakdown 
and Eileen, her kind of her, her close friend, is somebody who is sort of seen to be in some ways a bit of an opposite or kind of complementary figure. So she, um, for example, has not been quite as widely successful. She's successful in her own way, but she's not sort of as financially successful. Um, and there's this that that sort of plays into the relationship of these two women. One being basically a millionaire. The other, um, we're told, she sort of earns around 20,000 euros a year. And so that's obviously vi wildly different circumstances. Um, and in the process, we also learn about a couple of relationships of these two women. Um, I will say sort of, although I don't think this was like a full five-star read for me, I enjoyed this a lot more than I thought I would. Um, I listened to it as an audiobook. I thought it was firstly very, very well delivered as an audiobook, really kind of, I mean, I'm a sucker for Irish accents anyway, but it, it was so well delivered um, and the, the kind of, the characters were very well captured within the, their, their ways of speaking, not only sort of in terms of how they're performed as an audiobook, but I think Sally Rooney is very good at uh, kind of picking up little differences in the way people will speak. Each character sort of felt like they had their own dialect or kind of idiolect, and even if, um, even if the the characters, you know, even if you sort of lost where you were with a character, I think you could normally tell roughly which character you were hearing by the voices, which I think is a really worthwhile um, sort of thing and a really great part of this book. And I think I just generally really enjoyed and loved this book for what it does on so, so, so many levels. And a lot of that is going to involve, involve spoilers, so I'm about to go into that territory. If you would not care for any spoilers, then uh, please do look away now or kind of cover your ears or just you know pause the video that's a more logical <laughs> way of doing it um and please do come back after you've read the book um if you are so inclined but we're about to go into spoiler territory so these two women um we already sort of as i've mentioned we already know that these two women have very different sort of circumstances in their lives but we learn quite early on that the, uh, the alice the author has moved into um this sort of old house and it's sort of is just sort of just outside of the city i think just outside of dublin um and what we get that's really interesting is this sort of resentment between these two characters that really starts to build. Their early emails, um, Eileen and Alice, are full of these sort of really interesting um, sort of diversions and tangents where, you know, they talk about the state of the world or they talk, ab talk about ancient civilizations and how they ended, or they talk about all of these sort of wild and various other things. And it's really exciting and then interesting. And I really loved actually sort of the experience of walking and listening to these two women essentially discuss quite interesting intellectual things. So, you know, um, at one point, I think I want to say it's Eileen, um, maybe it was Alice, one of them uh, says that, you know, this idea that, that history ended um, with the fall of the Berlin Wall and everything that's come since hasn't really been that interesting as history. But then as the two women are talking about it, they're like, oh, isn't it interesting that we, we pitch this idea of history um, sort of ending around the same time that we were born, that for us, anything now that comes is sort of a, a mere footnote and isn't really a big historical moment. And that seems at first like a little bit of, you know, intellectual fan service or, or whatever of these two kind of you know sometimes you do wonder like do people really have these kinds of lengthy conversations via email all the time and actually i think it was quite believable for these two women it felt like it wouldn't be too far out for these two women to be having these kind of discussions which i really enjoyed but then you notice that there's this real um frustration that builds up between these two women we learned that alice the author has had a, a mental breakdown um and then when she starts dating this other man, um, there's this kind of resentment between the two women because Alice is sort of like, well, why aren't you sort of happy in some ways for me? Or why can't you understand that this is what I need? And when, when Alice invites this man, uh, Felix, to join her um, in, uh, 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 for a work trip to Rome, then Eileen so sort of starts feeling a bit frustrated about kind of, well, why how comes he gets that invite why is it that you know surely to, to fly to rome you probably at some point need to pass near the airport um you know come and see me while i'm here and it becomes this sort of resentment and i think what's really interesting is because these two women are spending so much time not seeing each other things really fester over these emails where you know 
one of the women will say, well, actually, I felt like you weren't here for me in this way. And the other woman will say, well, actually, I felt like you weren't here for me. And it turns into this really detailed thing. And I, I found it quite believable, actually. I, I felt that that wasn't sort of just there as a literary device. It felt like a really real relationship between these two women. And what is then really fascinating is what that starts to turn into later. And what that turns into is really quite interesting. Um, again, obviously, we are in the spoiler territory, but this is sort of even more spoilery, I guess. Uh, these two women um, finally meet alongside uh, two men. So Felix, who Alice is sort of by this point pretty much dating, um, and uh, Simon, a character who we're introduced to quite early on, who is uh, essentially sort of like an old friend, but he and Eileen have this sort of unresolved romancy kind of thing where they're kind of not together but they pretty much could turn into being in a relationship anytime and you know there's this whole thing and um, we also get this really interesting portrayal of sexuality so um we learn quite early on again that um alice and felix are both bisexual and it's a really interestingly sort of dealt with thing because they sort of they have this sort of natural connection and it, you know, Felix is sort of treated then as a sort of, sort of um, there's a kind of commonality between the two, uh, between the two uh, people in this relationship, between Felix and Alice, that really sort of deepens their bond in some ways. There's a kind of understanding there. And then Felix is sort of trying it on with Simon, and there's also this sort of undertone of maybe Simon actually secretly wants something to happen here, um, or at least maybe we're just hearing it a lot from Felix's point of view there. Um, but what I think is brilliant about the way this book comes towards this sort of crescendo is these two women are suddenly then in a situation where they have to really thrash out the, the problems they've been having in their relationship. Um, you know, all these kind of things that have remained unsaid. So Eileen visiting Alice a lot in the hospital while she was having her breakdown. Um, Alice sort of seeing Eileen as almost being too involved and being too bitter when she's not involved in everything. And there's this really interesting scene where um, after the two women have had a little bit of a sort of passive aggressive thing, um, uh, Felix uh, turns to Eileen and is sort of like, oh, well, if she's your best friend, how comes you haven't spent all that time, that much time coming to to visit her? Why haven't you come to, to why, why didn't you go to New York or come to visit her in this new place? And Eileen, quite rightly in many ways, <laughs> says, well, firstly, I couldn't really get in touch with her at times. Secondly, my work has stopped me. You know, I do a, a sort of regular nine to five. I can't just kind of get away and I don't have money. Like, it's difficult for me to get there. And Felix unintentionally sort of also stirs this pot because he talks about how um, she does not have enough, uh, that, you know, she could have made it happen if she'd really wanted to, but also says to Eileen, well, you know, she never spoke about going to see you <laughs> in a way that's sort of a bit like, oh, are you really, are you really best friends? And I think all, if, if all of this sounds a bit like sort of petty squabbling, I think I'm underselling it because I think that what this book does really well is captures how adult friendships are really complicated that, you know, all of the kind of, you know, it's really interesting from when I was a teacher, for example, and I remember kids in my class would like become best friends and fall out and become best friends again, all in the space of a day, sometimes mere hours. Um, and they'd be like, oh, we're best friends again now. And you're like, okay, great, cool. How did that all happen? And what's really interesting and complicated about adult relationships is how that there's so much more that's baked into it. Um, and I think what this book captures really well is how these characters bring their trauma and their, their, their problems and their in insecurities into this friendship. Um, so even though the friendship has been going on for a while, there are still things that are unresolved for both of these women, particularly, and they both need each other. We get the strong sense that they are really destined to be quite close friends, but that there is something that is difficult to communicate about that when they are, because they are in their thirties and because they are at a kind of various stage of life and, you know, Eileen's lack of fulfillment in her job in some ways or feeling like she should be more successful, uh, particularly when compared to her very, very successful friend, makes things a lot more complicated because both women can't really see the other one's point of view that easily. And I think, you know, I mentioned at the beginning something that 
Eric was saying from the Sally Rooney talk and um, that she gave about this, where part of the, 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 the talk apparently sort of went into conversations around capitalism and around the, the modern world. And I think what's really fascinating about this book is I think it, it, I think Sally Rooney's books are often quite sort of easily pigeonholed as um, as sort of being just about relationships. And I think what this book especially does really cleverly that I really appreciated is uses relationships as a way of critiquing or looking at the, the current world. So these two women are in very different financial situations and that massively drives a wedge between them. And as a result, both women have a really interesting relationship with capitalism, with money, with the modern world. Um, and we, you know, I spoke earlier about this idea of the fall of civilization that these two women email about. And part of that conversation is also about a civilization reaching its peak and then going into decline. And in many ways, we're meant to see these two women as, as existing in a world that is in decline. Um, the two women talk a lot about um, how ridiculous it is almost that you can go to a supermarket and have this wide array of food in front of you that has been brought from all across the world and then put in plastic and how absurd it is almost that you know you can pick up a salad that has some ingredients in it that have been flown from halfway across the world just so you can have a choice of things in in Tesco's or whatever and so I think it's really cleverly done um, I also really like the way that the characters jobs are sort of brought in in terms of um, the two men in this book. So Simon, we are told, um, less about his job really, but that he is religious and there is a, a strong sense of purpose that he gets from his faith. But we also have Felix who works in, um, I, I think it's named as Amazon, but if it isn't named as Amazon, is a sort of general sort of warehouse person and essentially is, you know, is doing a very kind of menial job um, for not very much pay. And he is frustrated with his job. We learn that quite early on. But what I think is really interesting about how that how it then deals with that is it then investigates, well, actually, what does it look like when, you know, a very, very successful woman, but who is completely burnt out by the demands of a an intensive sort of very public career, what happens when she completely burns out from that? and just needs a life of purpose and of normality, you know, a life away from plastic items in a supermarket, but the real kinds of things, even though she lives in this huge house. Um, what does that look like when she then interacts with a man who has never read her books um, and a man who is working on sort of essentially minimum wage in a sort of fairly menial job? And that also is a reversal of sort of gender roles in some ways. You know, she is the breadwinner. She is the, the kind of, she's able to support him financially at one point. She's the one taking him on holiday to Rome, uh, well, on this work trip to Rome. And what that all kind of means. And I think it's so fascinating. And it then kind of gets a little bit deeper. The two women talk about how it feels weird to be focusing on relationships and how it feels weird to be thinking about their sex lives while the world is burning. And actually, that's what's so funny and interesting, I think, about this book, is this book largely talks about ro uh, romance, relationships, sex lives, all against the backdrop of a burning world. And what I think is really clever about how it achieves that is it, it kind of always felt to me like there was a sort of wry smile from Sally Rooney throughout this book of, yeah, you know, it's a bit ridiculous to be talking about sex lives. Anyway, on to talking about sex lives. <laughs> and um, so I think it's really cleverly done. Um, and I'm quite excited by this, especially because, yeah, normal people left me a bit cold. Um, I thought a lot of it was done really well, but something about it just didn't really gel with me. Um, but I think Beautiful World, Where Are You? really feels like a very mature and confident novel to me, where it really feels like it's engaging with political issues in quite a clever and nuanced way, but also delivering it in a way that's very accessible and very interesting and where even if you don't want to pay attention to all the kind of political aspects of this novel, there's still a really good tale in there about the, the friendship between these two women and how the world around them has made this slightly more complicated for them, but also how those bonds are so important. Um, and I just think it's really cleverly done. Anyway, I'm going to stop rambling about it, but I've been Bob Booker. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this book if you've checked it out. Um, if you have, I'd love to know your thoughts, uh, particularly if you're somebody who has 
uh, read Sally Rooney before. I'd like to hear how it kind of compares to you. Um, I've not read Conversations with Friends. I'm kind of keen to maybe check it out now. Um, but uh, yeah, there we go. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Take care and speak to you all soon. Bye bye.